I'm doing a series on the biomarkers of uh, autophagy, fasting, and uh, cell, cell growth, cell division. As you see here, I've got one of those complicated um, metabolic pathways. Uh, not going to get too deep into it, but just want to focus on a couple of points here. If you look, uh, let me shrink this up a little bit, maybe a little bit more. If you look at, at this, one of the things you see is that you've got a, uh, a uh, branching point here, torque C1, or, or and torque 1 and torque 2. Uh, just a hint, these are actually subcomponents of mTOR. mTOR is mammalian mammalian target of rapamycin. And here's the rapamycin over here. So this rapamycin, we'll talk about this in another video. I'm not going to get too deep in it. But it's a very interesting story about being discovered in uh, the Easter Islands, you know, the islands with the, the large stone heads. Uh, there was a bacteria discovered there. They isolated a thing called rapamycin. That rapamycin is still being used today to thing, for things like uh, cardiac stents. It's also being used in uh, art, uh, uh, treatment of cancer. I'm not gonna, again, not going to get too deep, but I do want to cover this one item. As you see, in torque 1, it is a major uh, shunting or um, decision point in the pathway of going between autophagy and translational control or cell division. Now, what does that mean? Autophagy, you're beginning to see this a lot in, uh, on the internet. People are getting interested in this concept. And it has to do with uh, fasting and a lot of the positive impacts that you see with, uh, with fasting. Fasting turns on auto autophagy. Uh, again, break it down. Auto meaning self, phage meaning to eat. So it's the cell basically eating components uh, of itself, really what it's doing is it's using this as a recycling or trash cleanup component. Um, <clears throat> and what's the, uh, what's the decision point here? Again, it's that uh, mTOR or torque 1 component of mTOR. If the uh, cell already has uh, growth harm, hormone and growth um, uh, biomarkers such as IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, um, and the if the cell has a lot of uh, amino acids and proteins in the lysosomes, and if the cell has a lot of glucose, then it's going to go to the left here. Uh, it's going to go to translational control and cell division. In other words, the cell is going to opt, uh, take the pathway of cell growth. On the other hand, if rapamycin's um, uh, there, it's going to shut that off. If there's not insufficient uh, growth hormone or growth uh, IGF-1, if there's uh, insufficient um, lysosomal, um, and lysosomes are the sacs of cleanup and recycling bins within the cell, if there's inadequate lysosomal uh, proteins, inadequate uh, energy, again, it'll go more towards the autophagy side. Now, what's, the, what's so good about autophagy versus uh, cell division and cell growth? <clears throat> well, it appears that um, autophagy does have a lot of longevity components to it. So that's where all of this is coming from. That's where um, they're saying, look, you can decrease chronic diseases, you decrease diabetes, and that's true. You decrease diabetes and you decrease cancer. Now, <clears throat> I've gotten maybe deep enough in that area. Let's go back and talk about um, what I said I was going to talk about, and that is um, a uh, website, Kirk Hamilton, Staying Healthy Today. Um, I promised to cover two websites in a previous video, um, Joel Kahn's and uh, Kirk Hamilton's on Fasting Mimicking Diet. Proline, uh, Walter Longo's uh, FMD. I went too long and uh, was only able to cover Joel Kahn's. Now I'm going to cover Kirk Hamilton's. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why I'd like to cover it. He covers a couple of topics that uh, I'd like to introduce. One is uh, Dr. James Kelly. 
He's the um, CMO for uh, Chief Medical Officer for uh, El Nutra, the um, company that has um, adopted has con uh, contract to market Proline for Dr. Uh, Longo. Longo says he doesn't make any money off of uh, Proline. I believe that. Um, he says he's basically set up for any proceeds to go to uh, to charities. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think the folks that work for El Nutra have uh, set it up to where all of their profits go to um, to uh, charities. Now, James Kelly, I spoke with him a couple of times when I was getting first involved with um, um, Proline. <clears throat> And he and uh, uh, Kirk Hamilton talk about autophagy. They talk about IGF-1, and they talk about Leron syndrome. So I wanted to just touch on each of these items. Uh, you get a fairly light coverage, but again, uh, good, understandable coverage uh, on these topics in that video. And I'll put the or in that uh, podcast, and I'll put a uh, a link to the podcast under the uh, video itself. First, let's talk about Laurent syndrome. Uh, in this subtitle here, I, I think their spell checker uh, messed that up. I don't think it's in Lauren Ecuador, L-A-U-R-E-N. I think it's in Lauren Ecuador, which you see two lines below, L-A-R-O-N. There's a thing called Laurent syndrome. If you go, if you read uh, Fast, uh, The Longevity Diet by uh, Dr. Longo, and I've got a couple of videos on it, he talks about his experiences in working with a, a genetic pool, a large population of people that have do genetic dwarfism. <clears throat> it's called Laron syndrome, L-A-R-O-N. There's some very interesting components about it, and uh, here's one of them. Um, Laron syndrome is a genetic deficiency in IGF-1. What is IGF-1? It's IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor. It is made by the liver. <clears throat> it is made by the liver in response to growth hormone from the pituitary gland. So, if the uh, if if these people are unable to uh, create the signaling response to growth factor, they don't grow. So these people are short, and we've had several. Um, pictures of them. Pardon me for not taking the time to get another picture for this specific video. But there's, I wanted to cover, again, get through some other stuff on this. What's the, uh, what's the significance of that? Laron syndrome for fasting mimicking diet. Well, Laron syndrome, uh, pe people with Laron syndrome don't get chronic diseases. They don't get diabetes. They don't get um, cancers. There has been one reported case of diabetes in this large population. So what is it about um, IGF, growth hormone, that results in chronic diseases? I don't think we know that yet, uh, but we do know that that happens. So when you go back and you start thinking about the fasting mimicking diet and what uh, Walter Longo was thinking when he looked to develop this, he knew that fasting decreased IGF-1, and he knew that decreasing IGF-1 tended to decrease uh, diabetes and um, cancers. So he also knew, though, from his experience with his mentor, um, Roy, I can't remember Roy's last name. Somebody help me in the comments. Um, that, that doc, that mentor in... Uh, I believe is in LA, spent time in the bubble, in the desert, uh, what, 24 months of um, caloric restriction. They saw huge decreases in, um, in a lot of chronic diseases uh, with these folks, huge improvements in uh, biomarkers. And again, that's where, where some of these connections are being made about different biomarkers autophagy, cancer, and diabetes. Now, <clears throat> as I've said, uh, 
long ago found that fasting reduces IGF-1, mTOR. I just mentioned mTOR a few minutes ago, mammalian target of rapamycin. In other words, that mTOR um, is the thing that causes cell growth and cell replication. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other biomarkers there I'm not going to get into right now. Now, <clears throat> um, there's something that I haven't mentioned yet, um, and that is the stimulation of stem cells. It does appear that uh, there are a couple of ways of getting repair of tissues. Uh, one is stem cell, stem cell. The other is um, uh, cellular growth. And if we're in a mode of con constantly eating, constantly have uh, enough and more um, energy than we need in our cell, uh, amino acids that we then we need in our cell, uh, and growth uh, signaling, then we're always going to be in a mode of cell growth and um, uh, cell division. On the other hand, as we've said, those tend to head us more towards uh, decreased longevity, diabetes, cancers, chronic diseases. Um, you can also get uh, tissue repair um, through autophagy. And again, the tissue repair often comes with, um, with uh, stimulation of stem cells. And that tends to hap start happening at about 16 hours, and it uh, ramps up significantly once you get to um, um, having another senior moment. Uh, ketogenesis. So <clears throat> one other item I wanted to touch on, and then I'll, I'll leave it alone, and we'll close out and we'll go into some other videos on the biomarkers themselves. And that has to do with uh, fasting mimicking diet and cancer. So we've touched on a couple of different components of fasting mimicking diet and cancer. If you think about, um, you go back to a comment about rapamycin. Rapamycin was discovered and it was found to decrease uh, cell replication. That's what's going on with cancer. You're getting continued replication of cells and it's uncontrolled. That is the definition of cancer. And as I said, rapamycin is still used for uh, cancer chemotherapy. Um, and uh, like I said, also, uh, it, there's uh, use with um, decreased stent uh, uh, blockage for uh, cardiac stents. Again, thank you for your patience as I stumble through some of the uh, the concepts that I'm wanting to uh, to get out there. So what has rapamycin got to do with uh, why did I bring up rapamycin again in can and the FMD in cancer? There was a there are two reasons why rapamycin could be stopping cancer growth. One is that it could stop cell division Another is that it would stop cell growth. You see, cells are not going to divide unless they grow. If cells divided without growth, they would just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Rapamycin, uh, so one of the major um, focus points of research in this area has been, which does my rapamycin do? Does it decrease cell um, division or cell growth. And uh, that's where I'll get into some uh, science done by David Sabatini at MIT. He's done a lot of work in this area and he, he and some related teams demonstrated that these are shown um, that rapamycin actually decreases cell growth. Again, I'm giving a little bit of bleed into um, some of the next topics in terms of um, biomarkers and uh, fasting. Hope you've, uh, if you're still here, you've been, again, as usual, been very patient and I appreciate it. We'll get deeper into this, uh, what's going on?
the with the biomarkers on fasting and um, the fasting mimicking diet. Thanks again.